Uh, this is the analysis of health systems merger using Cotter's change management model. This was created by Group 3, Julie Boyer, Allison Forget, Samantha Hua, Felicia Rose, and narrated by Samantha Hua, myself, and Felicia Rose. For our case study, uh, we decided to look at the merger of the Headwaters Hospital, William Osler, and Central West CCAC Health Centers. It has been identified that the merger of these three health centers would lead to significant cost savings. In fact, the facilities are challenged with finding almost $40 million in cost savings. Um, with the changing population, it has also been established that the facilities would need to explore new models of care. Uh, by combining the resources, the health centers could offer more specialized care based on the population. Uh, to maximize the success of this transformation, we will be using Cotter's eight-stage change management model. The eight stages consist of establishing a sense of urgency, forming a powerful guiding co uh, coalition, creating a vision, communicating the vision, empower others to act on the vision, uh, plan for short-term wins, consolidate improvements, and institutionalized new approaches. So why Cotter's eight-stage model? We decided to use Cotter's eight-stage model to analyze this case study. It is generally accepted that change can be difficult and can often be emotionally charged. Often, these emotions can undermine the attempts of promoting change. Uh, through Cotter's eight-stage model, we feel this takes everything into consideration. Uh, Campbell refers to this model as see, feel, change, which differs from the traditional models of analysis, think, change. Cotter's model keeps in mind uh, the feeling and emotions of the team members. When team members are considered, the change transformation is more likely to be successful. So how far has this change process gone through already. Um, so far, the merger has proceeded through the first two stages of Cotter's change model. A sense of urgency has been established by the health centers. As previously mentioned, um, the facilities say they need to find about $40 million in cost savings. They also mentioned they're looking at exploring new care models, which each site may still be able to support. Uh, there are also strategic, a strategic partnership committee, which has been formed to begin the change process. Uh, the article describes the plans for the three, stage three, uh, which is the creation of the memorandum of understanding between the organizations, which will outline how they will proceed through the change process. While this is not, outline is not very specific in detail of the change process, it will provide a basis of understanding for the health centers to move through. Our recommendations for a successful merger using Cotter's change management model are as follows. Our first recommendation involves stage four of Cotter's change model. Stage four stresses the importance of communication. Every faucet of communication needs to be used effectively to communicate the new vision and strategies. Through open communication, opinions, concerns, and fears can be expressed and taken seriously. This stage also recommends demonstrating new or changed behaviors as an example. Cotter noted that successful case of major change transformation were made possible by executive transformation teams leading by example. Change leaders should become positive examples of the change. It is the goal 
of this stage to ensure the new vision and strategies to achieve the vision, or in this case, merger, are fully adapted by the entire organization. Therefore, it is our recommendation that the guiding team uh, fully engage the physicians and other staff members regarding the merger by using every facet of communication possible, emails, memos, meetings, town halls, etc. The strategic partnership committee will open the line of communications not only to concerns, fears, anxieties about this trans transition, but also allow staff members or team members become positive change agents. If done appropriately, staff will become heard and involved throughout the whole process of the transformation, allowing the whole team to become invested into the process. So specifically, what are our next steps? First, the guiding team or change leader should begin by getting a feel of the room and using their emotional intelligence to monitor how the rest of the team feels as they progress through the change. It will be key to continually monitor the different feelings from the team members to know when to progress, push, or slow down the transformation. Second, the change leaders should work towards effectively communicating and maintaining the sense of urgency that was previously established in Cotter Stage 1 to the rest of the team. Finally, the change leaders need to initiate a continuous open dialogue with the stakeholders. Uh, what is actually unique about this merger is that there are many different stakeholders across the three different hospital system. It will be critical moving forward that the stakeholders are continuously involved in an open dialogue where their concerns and questions can be answered. We recommend using a question and answer session, uh, one of the tools described by Cotter to initiate this discussion. Our second recommendation is based off of Cotter's sixth stage of change management that focuses on planning for and celebrating short-term wins. By breaking up a large project, or in this case, a merger of three major healthcare providers, into smaller achievements, each goal can be met and celebrated, creating measured success and improving morale. While the completion of the merger will be the ultimate goal, large scales transformations such as this will take time. And in that time, be it one, two, or three years, the change management team risks losing momentum, thereby losing support of their stakeholders, staff, and physicians. The goals of Cotter's sixth stage is not just to hope for opportunities to celebrate, but to actively create situations that can be seen as an achievement. And the change management teams will want these wins to be big and visible with much pomp and circumstance as possible. This will add to the credibility to the change process. The change management team will want to think of this in the terms of plan, achieve, reward. Therefore, set a goal with a deadline. Specific to this case would be drafting a memorandum of understanding between all the parties involved. Plan. By meeting and brainstorming a document that is satisfactory to all, by setting a deadline, they renew a sense of urgency that can get lost over years in of a long project. It adds to the pressure as well, and therefore motivation to keep the wheels of this project in motion. Achieve the goal. Have a draft ready for stakeholders to review. Show the public that progress has been made. By making wins highly visible, it also adds credibility to the process that will largely take place behind the scenes. This will reinforce that the project is still top priority, even though they might not hear about it on a daily basis. And finally, reward. Show recognition to individuals and staff that assisted in the process and make note of those who truly acted as agents of change, those that supported the project and worked to make it happen. Whether it's a promotion, a salary increase or bonus, or even just acknowledgement of a job well done, these are positive motivators that will keep the change team feeling valued and inspired to see them through the next task. In addition to all of this, short-term goals serve as checkpoints. They can force clarification or revision of an ultimate goal as time passes and more knowledge is gained. As each step is completed, more information may come to light that will require modifications to bet suit the corporations, the staff, or the community.
In terms of the merger of the Headwaters Health Care Center, William Olser Health System, and the Central West CCAC, there were several of the steps that needed to be completed in order to achieve their objective. The first was to generate feedback from the community, followed by review by the Central West Local Health Integration Network, approval from Ontario Minister of Health, and the changes made to the provincial legislation. It is the recommendation of our group that each of these be viewed as individual projects that when combined ultimately contribute to the conclusion of the merger. Using the generation of the community feedback as an example, we would recommend the merger team advise that the staff position and the community's opinion is desired on that subject. Use social media, newspapers, and canvassers to gather stakeholders' thoughts, comments, and opinions then compile them into an easy read format. This will allow the merger team to create knowledge of the project as well as solicit community support while highlighting the benefit of the move. By publicizing the results, especially if they are favorable, will drum up further excitement and motivation for the team to keep the wins coming. It is also a good time to make the note that these are the working hard for the merger as they are as they may also play a key role in our next recommendation. Our third and final recommendation involves Cotter's eighth step, rooting the new processes and behaviors into emerging corporate culture. If the newly implemented change is not rooted, there is a risk of black slide once the pressure of transformation is removed. There is two factors that ensure that this does not occur as suggested by Cotter. The first is to ensure everyone is, to, is aware of how changes to the corporation is a benefit by demonstrating how the new approach is an improvement, individuals are more likely to embrace this new model's change. The second is to reinforce those improvements, though the next generation of leaders. This is where the reward from Carter Six Step can be demonstrated for those that showed themselves to be great agents of change and whose role was integral to the change process. From planning to implementation to those support of the change can and should be rewarded with promotions to decision-making roles that will reinforce the new values and approaches of the corporation. It is the recommendation of our group that once the amalgamation of the three healthcare corporations is complete and a single CEO and board of directors is established, that they set about incorporating Cotter's two factors for success in their new system to plan for and once again celebrate new successes with stakeholders, be it decreased wait times, increased access to care or cost savings, and demonstrated successes will serve to reinforce that the new conglomerate is functioning well and as well remind everyone that challenging times they may have faced during the transition was well worth it and that their trust in them and in the process was well placed. The amalgamation of three health centers is a necessity in order to create greater access to care and create effective cost-saving measures for the sustainability of the healthcare system in Ontario. We use Cotter's eight-stage change model to outline how to lead effective change. As long as the organization takes our three recommendations into consideration, this health, large healthcare merger will be well on its way into success attached are our references. Thanks for listening.